All right, guys, how's it going? This is going to be an instructional video on PC memory, in particular, a gaming PC memory. I'm going to show you how you can check how much memory your PC has and how much memory that games are running on your PC. I'm going to show you that you can run multiple games on a bog standard PC, and by the end of it, you'll be left in absolutely no doubt whatsoever as to how much memory you really need for a gaming PC. So the first thing you're going to have to do is load up a program called Resource Monitor. Now, there's a couple of ways to do that. If you just go into your search bar here in Windows, this is only going to work in Windows 7, Windows 8. I'm going to show you how to do it through Windows 7. What I do is I type in Resmon. I can just click on that. And it loads up Resource Monitor. It should start in the Overview. If you want to see the Memory tab, you just click on that and it loads up the Memory tab. Now, I'm going to switch it off there. The second way is, if you press Control, press Shift and then press Escape, it brings up the Windows Task Manager. From there, you can click on Performance and then click on Resource Monitor. It's the exact same thing. That's two ways to do it. If you're using Windows 8, I'm not sure about it. You're going to have to Google that. Just Google Resource Monitor in Windows 8 and that will tell you how to do it. What about the Resource Monitor? Well, but in the memory tab, as you can see, here you've got a list of programs and processes that Windows is actually running right now. At the top, I've got this thing called OBS, which is my open broadcasting software. This is what I use for making videos. You can see some others there that you probably recognize. Skype's there, Steam. You probably know what they are. Now, there's things here you can actually mouse over, and it tells you what it actually does. The, important, the ones you're interested in is this working set, the shareable and the private. Basically speaking, this is what, this is the amount of RAM that, that OBS is using right now. So that's 315,000 kilobytes or 315 megabytes of RAM. 21 megabytes of it is shareable, which means this private thing, if you mouse over it, the amount of physical memory in use by the process that cannot be used by other processes. So this is what it is actually using of RAM that nothing else can you know, no other program can use. So in effect, this number here is probably the most accurate number of how much memory that this is taking up of your RAM. Now, how much RAM have you got? You can see down here it says installed. The amount of physical memory installed in the computer. 8,192 megabyte, 8 gigabyte of RAM. There's another one above it that says total. So it's slightly smaller. And the reason it's smaller is because it's minus this hardware reserved amount of 83 megabyte. The hardware reserved amount is used for, you know, your peripherals and your drivers and stuff like that. You're never going to be able to use this 83. It shouldn't be a very high number in most systems. Uh, it should probably be below 100 in, in most systems. Now, in use, you, pretty obvious, yeah. It's using about 1.7 gigabyte there. Simply put, that's 1.7 gigabyte of programs, all this, OB, Skype, etc. And Windows itself. So these are basically the two that say you know, you can't use or they're already in use and the hardware reserved. The other three, the modified, the orange one, the dark blues standby and the light blue one's free. Now, in effect, all of this is available memory, these last three. However, instant available memory is what is free and standby memory. If you actually mouse over that, it tells you the amount of memory, including standby and free memory, standby and free, that is immediately available for use by processing drivers or the operating system, right? So in effect, that's what, 6.3 gigabyte of memory I've got there? And this modified, it's sort of free memory, but it's not quite as instant as the likes of the standby and free memory. So this confuses a lot of people because sometimes you see a lot more in standby, a lot more in modified, and free can be down but really low, maybe 20 megabyte or maybe 200 megabyte. And people with 8 gigabyte of RAM or... Even 16 gigabyte of RAM, maybe look at it and say, well, why have I got so little free memory left? But it's not because it's just in standby, which is basically the same thing as free. And one way to look at it is free memory is wasted. It's doing nothing, basically, right? Whereas the standby memory is sort of prepared to do something. That's that's like a good way to actually think about it. So you really don't want this, you know, sitting about with lots of free memory. What I'm going to do now, though, is... Start loading up some games just to see how far that this 6.3 gigabyte of memory will go after a few games are loaded up. Now, what if I had I told you I was going to run five games off of 8 gigabyte of RAM and still have 
2 gigabyte left? Because that's exactly what is happening right now. I'm running Civilization 5. I'll just load it up to show you. Load it onto OBS. Right, so there's Civilization 5, which is currently running on my system. Right, the next one's XCOM. You can see here how much it's using. Yeah, so Civ 5 is using 900 megabyte. XCOM using 623 megabyte. There we have XCOM. Now, the third game is Civilization Beyond Earth. That's using about half a gigabyte of memory. And there it is. The fourth game is Elite Dangerous, and that is using around about half a gigabyte of memory as well. So there I am sitting in my spaceship. And the final game I'm running is Tomb Raider. It's not too intensive on memory, it's only down about 300 megabyte. It's pretty low for a game. I mean, most games kick around about the 600 or the 500, maybe to 1.2 gigabyte. And last up, I've got Tomb Raider, and the lovely Lara. Now, it's not exactly running fast, but I'm running five games on one PC, that's why. Believe it or not, you could actually play these games. The reason it's, like, it's so laggy is because I'm recording at the same time I'm running five games in memory. So there you have it, five games running while I am recording and there is still around about two gigabyte of memory left. Now, there are games out there that are going to use maybe two, even more than two gigabyte of memory, but the point here should be obvious, right? You do not need any more than eight gigabyte of memory in order to, you know, for a gaming PC. Games are only using one or two gigabytes. And even if you're running other stuff in the background, you know, I'm recording, Skype's there, Steam's there, it's only going to take up a maximum of 2 gigabyte. The reality of it is, 4 gigabyte is enough for a gaming PC, but you maybe start to have to, you know, shut a few things down in some games, maybe you're not, you know, it's safer to go with the 8 gigabyte. It makes a little bit more sense, but if you were desperate to, you know, save money, Go for 4 gigabyte of RAM, that will do you fine, as long as you know you're not going crazy in all the other smaller programs that you, you maybe want to run in the background. Now, I'm just going to shut all these down now. It's all running pretty smoothly now that I've only got the one game running. What kind of contraption is this? So that's them all shutting down. Tomb Raider's just about to shut down now. That's why it's grey. It's showing up as grey. But once it's shut down properly, that'll go away. And I'll have all my memory back, back as normal. Now, the last thing I want to go over here is the Steam Hardware Survey. If you go to Google, type in Steam Hardware. There it is. Steam Hardware Survey. Click on that. Now, the Steam Hardware and Software Survey for January 2015. If you scroll down a bit, you can see that this is what the average of people, PCs. Anybody who takes the, the Steam Survey gets put into this database, basically, yeah? And this is the average of what, this is what the average machine on Steam, which is a gaming platform, remember, right? So this is the average gaming uh, machine. As you can see here, most people are using Windows 7, 64 bit. And 8 gigabyte is the actual highest percentage of gaming. But let's just click on that. Start at the bottom here, 12 gigabyte and higher. 12.75% of people have 12 gigabyte or more RAM. But what is really interesting, right, is if you go from 7 gigabyte down, you count up all that, let's start from the bottom, 1 gigabyte or less, 2% 2, 2 of people are still using 1 gigabyte or less. 2 gigabytes, 10% of people are using 2 gigabyte of RAM. That's quite a lot considering, you know, how old and how long ago it was that 2 gigabyte of RAM was standard. 3 gigabyte is almost 14%. Now that is pretty high. And 4 gigabyte, 21.63%. Now, add up all that and that is more than 50%. More than half of the people on Steam are using PCs with less than 8 gigabyte of RAM. Now, if you're a game developer, you can't just ignore these people. It's going to be really long before game developers, you know, can start to like really ignore these people. They can ignore these people here, right? Even the 1 gigabyte people can be ignored now. I don't know what games these guys are playing, yeah, but they can't, they can't be very modern games. But these, this 10% here of people who still have 2 gigabyte of RAM, 
That's a lot of people that these game developers don't really want to be ignoring. Certainly, once you, once you get to the 4%, there's just way too many people here that can't be ignored. So game developers need to make their games work on systems with around about 2 gigabyte of RAM. They're not bothered about this. You know, they're not going to start making games that require 12 gigabyte of RAM. They're, they're miles away from making games that even require 8 gigabyte of RAM. So really, what it comes down to is, 8 gigabyte of RAM is going to be more than enough. I know Bill Gates said the same thing about 640k. I'm going to stick my neck on the line and say, 8 gigabyte of RAM is going to do you until at least 2020. And probably even past that point. As you saw, games simply don't use that much memory. And there's no real need for them to use so much memory. Especially when people don't actually have an awful lot of memory. So game developers, there's one thing I know about game developers is they will choose the lowest common denominator that makes financial sense to them. And right now, that is a 2 gigabyte, an up limit. If you write a game for 2 gigabyte that works on a 2 gigabyte machine, then it's a 2 gigabyte game. And that's the way it's... And that's the way it's going to be for a very long time yet. So the next time somebody on a forum, a hardware forum or a games forum, this is why I'm doing this by the way, I see people on games forums giving advice on hardware and they say stuff like, oh you need to get 16 gigabyte of RAM at minimum nowadays, or 32 gigabyte of RAM would be good. I've even seen some people say get 64 gigabyte of RAM. What for? So you can run 120 games at the same time? There's no point in that. It's just a complete waste. And on top of that, right, you're using more power. It's not much, but you're using a little bit more power if you're using more RAM. You're going to be adding more heat into your case. Again, that's not an awful lot. But the big one for me, I'm a system builder, right? I buy the parts, I build the PCs by, by hand and, you know, I ship and sell them all over the place. One thing that I know about is return rates and failure rates in hardware. The last thing you want to be doing is buying more components than you need for a PC because the more components you buy, the more chance of something going wrong. Now, if you're buying 64 gigabyte of memory, that's like eight, eight sticks of eight gigabyte of RAM for 64 gigabytes. You're just giving yourself a massive headache down the line someplace because there's a very good chance that one of those sticks of RAM is going to be either broken at the start or it's going to fail during its lifetime and that's going to cause you just hassle for no for absolutely no reason.